right here. I'm going to stick right here. Looks like a good spot as any. What? <laughs> Hi. Okay, dear. Hey, you causing trouble. Hi, as he's in trouble. Hey, what? Oh, it's here. I know it's pretty good. I got your Of course, you don't need to tell you about Michael. Oh, right. I don't need to tell you about Michael. Talk about trouble. Oh, we don't need to tell me about him. You have to go to sleep again, are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to go. I'll do that on the way back. Hi, Peppy, come here. Everybody, what's going on? Since you're going to listen to this, Snyder. I'm going to bear my soul. Angel, lie down. Rustic dog for a rustic towel. Stay away from the camera. Yeah, here. Angel, right here. I'm going to bore into you. Try to, try to, uh, See what kind of life I can get out of you. Rustic dog for a rustic towel. Sit down. Good dog. It seems like it. Yeah. What's your Good dog. Uh, note, my notepad in. And there's a rusty kitty around there too somewhere. Good puppy. Mm -hmm. And a crooked smile. Yes, get out of here! I'll look all the crooked pieces correctly. What's amazing that these okay. usually these things will... Testing one, two, three. Are we good? It's, we yeah, it's alive. good. It's cool. Okay. Hey, uh, let's get in here! Mm -hmm. yeah. This is your yeah, she has. Yeah, right across the, if people walk back and forth, then that's the second to block the camera. Uh, it's perfect right here. Okay. All right. We need one more chair. We need, yeah, there's a couple more chairs. Bring the lights up a little. You want the lights up, sister? Turn the lights up more. It's that one that goes the whole way up. How about the second one? Yeah, I'm not doing it. There you go. That's better. Is there, yeah. is there a See problem with me sitting here? No, I think it's perfect. I don't better have it here. <laughs> you better you might, have, you might want to hold my hand or this. Why? Oh, I have a scared. I have to listen to you. Again. Cheers. <laughs> First of all, hey, it's Sissy's birthday at midnight. Oh, come on. Oh, right. So, yeah, yeah. we're going to stay here. We can wish her birthday. <laughs> Yeah. Now watch this I'll get it over with. Happy birthday, <laughs> to, you. Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Sissy. Happy birthday to you. Oh, Yay. Okay. And many more. Yeah, and it's Tom's. Midnight. Tom. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's just around the midnight. That's it's, right. it's Tom's on the 14th. Oh, well, it's it's I'm at the end of the day. <laughs> 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 All right, well, here's the deal. My sister Julie was going to be the speaker. She's a master gardener, and she canceled out that late last night. Something. My sister Julie, which put me in a little bit of a bind. So I called Tom, and uh, he's gonna he was gonna step up the plate. He still is gonna speak a little bit about some of my issues, but the main person that he wanted to use, he doesn't have the technical equipment to do it okay. the way he wants to. So. I'm going to speak a little bit here. I'm going to try to bear my soul here. And anybody that's, when I'm done, anybody else that feels inspired to maybe do the same, that would be great. So, uh, first of all, what was the main ABC topic of last month? Oh, that's good. Free bet it to anybody that remembers. <laughs> Uh, car, uh, greater fuel efficiency for cars. No, no ABC. No, this is the ABC. Oh, okay. It was an ABC. It was... What? Ah. No. That was the first one. You get a free I told you we got rid of that one. <laughs> we got rid of the Americanism before communism and replaced it with what? Fascism. Oh, always being Christian-like. Childlike. Ah! <laughs> okay, well, I didn't say, sorry guys, you split me. <laughs> <laughs> Always being childlike. Well, then you only get one. Okay. <laughs> that was the thing, that's what I tried, you know, for the month. So every month I'm going to change these ABCs, and anybody that wants to help change it, make up your own, that'd be great. This month, it's going to be actively be committed, okay? 
We're going to try to get... Committed? Yeah, not to an insane asylum. Oh. Not really. <laughs> I was kind of hoping. Yeah, hoping. But the, that may happen before it's all said I get a little vacation, people waiting on me and stuff. <laughs> Asking me if I'm okay. How about it, Dad? Does this seem like a little bit of an insane asylum where you're at? Who, me? Yeah. I waited all day for you. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, you. so I'm trying to get people to be committed to this club, and because to get things going, it's going to take some commitment. And can you get a uh, swimming pool? Yeah, no, that's. Oh. <laughs> that's that, I, I, I dug the hole ten years ago. <laughs> ten years ago, the hole was dug, and it's still waiting to be cemented. Yeah, we have a ten years. As soon as I get some money, plan. and I, you don't want me to talk about Cali sticks again. But if we're we're I'm going to talk a little bit about money, and a little bit about power, a little about a little bit about war, a little bit about who I am, and and uh, a di some different who's here. Who? Sorry. I, I, I was thinking, like I said, last night I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking, okay, if I have to speak, what am I going to talk about? And I started thinking about all this stuff and I was going to get my notepad and I thought, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to wing it from my heart and uh, talk about some of the things that happened to me in my life and what I'm trying to do and, and see how well it comes out. And uh, if I bore you, oh uh, well, but uh, I'm going to try to actually say things I never said before. And uh, hopefully it'll make you think and probably make you think I'm crazy, but that's okay. It won't be the first time. <laughs> we know you're crazy. <laughs> we don't think. We don't think. Well, see, I got, no you know who this is? Uh, <laughs> this is? This is me and one of my previous life. This is the Green Man. You know the story of the Green Man? No, tell me the story. Here's, here it is. The Green Man comes up every once in a while. When, every, when, 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 when people get so carried away that they get lost and what... The, all the technological or, or different things that society that starts breaking away from the, the environmental, you know, or na na nature, <coughs> so to speak. That's why I said I'm here beside Mother Nature here and hoping, you know, that, that uh, she helps guide me with this little talk. But, but the green man, see how I have, have, have her have him set up here? <laughs> Perfect. These things all happen by, you know, this weird some of these things that, that come to me but it's like the, you know these trees and the you know it so that's why I think somehow there is a little bit of a green man in my blood not to mention I am a green you know and so but anyway the, the green man in t different times it goes back to thousands of years it's a very interesting book if anybody wants to read it it uh, talks about it uh, they were like half man you've seen pictures in the different uh, temples and, and different things where you know the Images of the green man, like you know, like this, with flowers coming out of them and stuff. And, but anyway, basically, the legend was that he would cause all kinds of things to happen that would hopefully get man back away from the path they were going and <coughs> get him back to a more natural path, you know, back with nature. And he, sometimes he caused a lot of havoc and a lot of trouble, but very, very interesting book. I, I highly recommend anybody read this. You know, this, I actually dressed up as the Green Man here for Halloween right. a couple years ago. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, to get along with some who's, um, I was going to start with a, I was just thinking last night about Adam and Eve and, uh, you know, the whole start of man, supposedly, and uh, you know, and how we started, how we fell from grace, or fell from our innocence, you know, and I got to think, it probably Adam and Eve, you know, it probably would have gone away with it for a while, he probably did, you know, he'd walk around with it, <coughs> but he decided to put these fig leaves on himself, you know, and I, I imagine that was Eve's idea, you know, that, because uh, once, once they ate from the apple, knowledge of good and evil, you know, God put blessing on them. All of a sudden, they uh, they had to provide for themselves. And Eve knew this probably right away. So, probably figured out, you know what, I better do something. Cause all Adam's going to do is stare at me all day. So, anyway, she probably <laughs> had the idea of getting, having the fig leaves. <coughs> so Adam would go to work instead of just staring at her beautiful self all day. And uh, But anyway, that's what God said. You know, the first thing that says, 
who told you you were naked? You know, it's, and, uh, that's why they, you know, they used to cover themselves because they basically lost their innocence and they started questioning, you know, good and evil and, and all these things that uh, started to conflict. And that all starts, you know, from the serpent. And I don't know, you know a little bit about the serpent and you guess like I do about who the serpent is and, you know, the force of the, the Luciferian uh, the force that's, uh, I guess, behind the serpent. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the serpent people and uh, why, you know, the war that we're in right now and why it's a pretty scary time to be living in. What's well, spiritual too? It's spiritual, definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, but since we fell, you know, since man fell from grace, and and I say all these uh, for thousands of years now, we've been at war. You think about, it, you know, how many how many different people have been murdered, and slaughtered, and, you know, and there are different reasons for it, you know. But I guess a lot of it was just because there's hatred, you know, and, and you know, good and evil is, you know. The, I guess the polarities that we're all going to, we came to this earth, you know, to learn about, you know, the different polarities. So, I mean, there's bound to be conflicts, but when it gets to the point where people actually murder, you know, and, and, and go to that degree, to me, that's, you know, that's evil when it's, you know, it's, it's it can be. just horrible, you know, to think that, that somebody could, you know, have that much hatred to somebody that they would, you know, cause wars or cause whatever. But, you know, we see it happening all the time now. And, uh, you know, what scares me now is the war that's going on and people don't even see it going on because they're, they've been blinded by, you know, the media and, you know, so many other things, uh, I guess, distractions. Um, Football, Brainwashing, baseball. yeah, just all kinds of things that the, the serpent people are basically behind all this. I don't know how many people ever listened to Jack Otto. He's one of my heroes. And, uh, I've listened to his documentary. He spoke quite a bit about who they are. You know, that's basically the Khazars, if anybody knows anything about them. Oh, yeah. That they go back hundreds and hundreds of years. And they were basically very ruthless people. And uh, around 500 years A.D., the king of the Khazars, he wasn't called a king, but the, um, whatever. A Kanat. He's called a Kanat. Yeah. He basically told them, you know, because the Christians hated him on one side and the Syrians hated him on the other side. They were being persecuted all around. And he talked to his people. They were like mercenaries. They would go and, you know, people would hire them to go kill. And, and they would kill, but they would also rape and pillage and do all kinds of nasty stuff. And so that's why they were so hated. They were very ruthless. But anyway, they became, they are very organized and very powerful. But they, since they were being persecuted, they, the leader told them to change their names to Jews. So that's how the whole, a lot of the so-called Jews today, that people think are actual true Jews or not, they're the, the basically from the bloodline of the Khazars, and they have very little of the DNA from from the tribe of Israel, which mm -hmm. if anybody, you know, if you study into one of the 12 tribes mm -hmm. of Israel, it's the tribe of Judah, that's basically where the term Jew comes from. Well, they're among, well the Khazars are, are, are actually a Turkic Mongolian people. Right. They're not from so that area. Yeah. And they, they they're not Semitic. Around Spain and yeah, they're not and, Semitic. And, uh, but anyway, they, they kind of <coughs> changed their whole, that's the uh, program, you know, and it was, they're very crafty and very intelligent, you know, and they, and they basically have, have figured out a way to get into every government of the world, and 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 so nowadays that's why you see there's so many of these so-called Jews that are dark skinned, you know, dark eyes. They blended in well with us, you know, in the Spanish area and the, you know, the Mediterranean area. So, but anyways, the true Jews were basically blonde hair, blue eyed. Most of us here are probably of German descent, and actually that's where the law of the tribe of Judah settled in German, Germany. So probably more. Jew, Jews in, in this room with true DNA than, than the average Jewish uh, synagogue. You're probably going to have like 80, they say like 80% of them have, uh, you know, the bloodline of the Khazars. So they're like 20% of actually. But everybody's so mixed up. The bloodlines have been mixed so much in the last you know, couple hundred years. It's hard to say exactly. But the point is, where I'm going with this is that the war that... Uh, that we're having right now because our government's been basically taken over and a lot of people don't understand that, you know, that, that, that the 
if you look at the whole administration, there's like 80% of it, or 85% of the administration are Rothschild Zionists. You know, and that's what the Rothschilds were, these Khazars, and they're, and they're in basically control of our, our government, you know, in control of the military, and in control of, you know, well, like I say, who, who controls money controls everything. And, and it's like the military, I think a lot of the leaders in the army, I mean, a lot of the books I read, th those guys know what's going on, and they, they don't like being manipulated, but they probably don't. You know, their hands are tied. What are they going to do? They, they know that if they would have a coup and try to get these guys, up, you know, there would be a massive amount of bloodshed and the economy would be turned over. It could be uh, horrendous results. So I think it's like a stalemate. You know, they don't know what to do, but I don't think they actually control the military. They don't control the heart of the military, let's put that way. They might have their paychecks and, and, they, and they control where the troops are going and they control all that, but these. Well, from what I understand, these people are afraid of returning veterans. They well, want to disarm the returning veterans. Well, that's probably true. You know, I think a lot of veterans, they go out there and they see that they're not really fighting for America. And they, you know, they're slaughtering innocent men and women and children. And they know that you know, this, this isn't what they signed up for. You know, and that's why so and many no suicides. Turning. The suicide rate is unbelievable. It's like 14% or something right now. So, I mean... Our boys, they are, at least they understand, by, they're getting educated because of the, the internet's been a big tool in educating people very quickly, you know, so people are getting educated about what's really going on in a hurry, and in a way that's a bad thing because these people also know that. So they're going to be basically in a situation that, hey, we got to do something before we, you know, these people have to throw us, you know, there's too, much, too many of them. So that is part of their agenda, you know, it's population control. And, it, and people don't believe that. Yes, we are the ants and we overwhelm them. Right. So, well, that's the thing. The ants are waking up and they know that they got to, so already they're thinning out the population. People are all, you know, I don't believe it. I said, I'll tell you what. They said, I, over the summer I had six eye surgeries, so I laid around all summer, couldn't do nothing but watch documentaries because I wasn't allowed to read or do anything. I watch seven or eight a day, you know, but I've, I've got quite an education. I tell people I've got my doctorate over this something. <laughs> a doctorate, a documentary it actually, but I have, I've read, hunt, uh, it was really a blessing. I've, I've, I've got a, quite an education, you know. It, I was always working so much, I really, you know, I heard stuff and I've read stuff, but I really didn't have time to concentrate on all this stuff. And there's so many documentaries out there, you know, I, I, I watched hundreds of them. And just off the top of my head, I could think of like three or four, like genetic roulette, Watch that one. Watch uh, what in the world are they spray spraying, or why in the world are they spraying. Watch uh, the Great Culling, C U L L I N G. Mm -hmm. Just those three, mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's many more. But you watch those three, and if you at the end of watching them, if you aren't convinced that there's an issue <coughs> to thin out the population, I don't know. I like I like I wish somebody could prove me otherwise, and I tell that to you know because a lot of people just don't want to accept that. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of people still don't accept that 9-11 was an inside job, and I have a real hard time with that. I tell people, I'll tell you what, and I, I take this bet to any guy at work, and, it, and I hate to call them cowards, and I don't, but I, it's like they're afraid to face, people are afraid because it, it's just a hard thing to face. But I tell them, here's the bet I make for you. I so I'll tell you what, you take $100 because I know how much money means to you. I'll put a hundred dollars up. I'll give you one DVD. There's hundreds of them out there on this 9 level. And I said, you watch that DVD with your family, and your wife and kids. And at the end of that DVD, if, if you don't think something's fishy or something's going on, it's not a, you know, if you're convinced it's all conspiracy theory, then you can have my hundred dollars. Otherwise, you think something's up, I get your hundred dollars. I haven't had one person take me up on it yet. And it's, mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, okay, guys, I know facing the truth is a tough reality. Sometimes it's very tough, but what are you going to do? You're going to sit because that was really like the start of World War Three, and in, in, in some people's opinion, and I agree with them. Mm -hmm. That's when World War Three started, and the terrorists aren't Al Qaeda out there. It's the big boys, you know, that, that orchestrated the whole thing. And I'm talking Bush and Cheney and you know, Rumsfeld, yeah, and, it, and people that know that study this stuff know. And the Zionists, the, the Zionists, Israelis, the Rothschild Zionists. Exactly. Yes, yes. Again, they did it to create, you know. A lot of 
hatred against the Middle East, so, you know, we'd have to go in there, and so they can they control that area. They're starting them Armageddon, you know, that's the that's their goal. I think they had the whole Armageddon situation set up and written more on, you know, and so that's where we're at. We're, we we need to get people to get their head out of their out of sand, you know. I, I think people are going a lot of people are going to come back as ostriches if they don't wake up because their heads, you know. And, and I hate to say it, but attorneys are like the worst because to me that they work for the they got their heads so far up the Rothschild Zionist asses <laughs> they're going to come back as hemorrhoids, you know. So. <laughs> That's not funny, but they need to repent. I mean, really, if they're supposed to be for about America, and they're you know there's so many things in America that they'll dream of. Freedom, a real freedom, is really hanging on. The, you should be on the shoulders of the teachers, you know, and the lawyer, the lawyers, the men of law that really actually study law. And if they don't see what's going on here, and if they don't try to at least, you know, do something to change things around a little bit, then we're done as far as you know, as far as believing in ever having a real freedom of real Americans. And so I'm just, you know, that's why I do this. I mean, it's hard for me sometimes. I, you know, people don't understand how hard I work to try to get to keep this place going, day in and day out, just trying to, you know, get people to come to these meetings. I call 30 or 40 people every meeting, you know, just trying to get people together to to share, you know, time together, and because that's part of the thing. See, we got to love each other and do it, you know, where we sacrifice and, and make sacrifices and really love each other like families, because that's their agenda. Break down families, break down the whole Christian way of thinking. Even so, the end, they're even after the individual too. Sure, sure. I mean, so you know, and and I I get scared too. I think, well, man, you know, what if they do something to me? You know, and I think sometimes, well, you know what? How can I just stand around and not do nothing? How can I watch my children and my grandchildren slowly being poisoned by you know, these chemtrails and the fluoride in the water and all this stuff, to them, and watch them die? 30, 40, or 50 years younger than they should. My 30-year-old daughter, stepdaughter, had a birthday party here last Saturday. And there was 30 or so kids, kids, about 30, you know, they're an average year of about 30 years old. And two-thirds of them were overweight. And, I mean, from obese to over, you know. Way and, and I'm thinking, you know what? The agenda's already, this is what they wanted to thin up. Two-thirds of the population, I'm thinking, Thirty years ago, when I was that age, there was maybe one or two heavy set people, and, you know, and all these, and then like you know, twenty percent of them were gay. That's another part of their agenda. Mm -hmm. to, well, they're to, just using those people. Us, and there's a good DVD on that. It's called Agenda. I got a bunch of them right over there, and it, and it shows how they started this programming back in the fifties with the colleges and stuff. You know, the agenda was to start bringing in homosexuality, and make it acceptable through the media and all these different ways. <coughs> Fluoride, the fluoridation program, you know. Poisoning us, and that fluoride. When you watch that great culling and realize how nasty that stuff is, and how that causes pains in your joints, you know, because your bones turn rough and your skin's rubbing against it. So the arthritis is probably more from fluoride than anything. And they're forcing it in our water system. Well, 85 percent of the cities in this country, you know, and everybody's in there, everybody's eating pills to, to help take care of the pain. Mm -hmm. And what's in the pills? The carry, the main carrier is fluoride. So they mask the pain temporarily, but they're causing the problems that get even worse. And, and this just goes on and on, I mean, and it's like, where, where's it stop? You know, where's it stop if the people don't wake up? We don't wake up the people, and we don't take this as a war on our own people. In this country, people seem to think, oh, it's America, they, they, we're loved by the you know, big brother. No, we're targeted by big brother. They're, they're going to thin us out more than anybody. I'm, you, know, you go into Europe, they don't have fluoride in any of their cities over there. Yep. They, you know, the chemtrails are probably worse in this country. They, twenty something, they say sometimes twenty times more aluminum in areas than there was twenty years ago, and they just started as chemtrails not even twenty years ago. In the, in the nineties, they started. And, and not, but the genetically modified food is what I'm saying with the weight problem with the people that there is the genetically modified food is is it's causing all kinds of polyps. All kinds of things because it's just not natural. And that's why you got to watch that genetic roulette DVD to understand what's going on there. Mm -hmm. You know, and and not to mention <coughs> salt. You know, but real salt. And people don't know the difference between real salt and sodium chloride. You know, sodium chloride is a salt that's been stripped of everything good, and now it's a poison, and that's causing you to hold water weight because it's 
your body's trying to protect you. And so a lot of this water weight is, is, is building up on in people. But it's not just the salt, it's the bleached sugar, it's the bleached flour. It's all this crap that we're eating and we're going to continue to eat it until people start waking up. Aspartame? Aspartame, exactly. Mm -hmm. And people just laugh at this stuff. And, you know, and I try to teach people, you don't know, believe what people what, call me bozo at work and stuff. And I, you know, now I think they're, they're not so much anymore, but because I think they're starting, their eyes are starting to tell. But maybe there is something going on here, but it's still like pulling teeth to get anybody to really... Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, it's not like this is something, okay, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's life. You know, this is our sacred, what do we, you know, what the hell? I, I, I just don't get it, how people can be so nonchalant about this stuff. You know, my sisters and teachers, and I get, try to give her, and her, you know, not just I mean, there's a lot of people that are teachers and lawyers and stuff, and I try to get them, you know, to watch these, and I don't know if they do it, on, but for the most part, they won't, but because they're scared, I think. You know, and they're afraid, well, if I go with, if, if I'm hanging out with you, even coming, you know, to Mike, Mike Green's house, that conspiracy nut, you know, people are going to label me as one of, it's like him, you know, and, mm. and I don't want people to think that about me, you know. I like my career and, too and I think that's what it is. A lot of people, that, you know, it's like, okay, so let's pretend nothing's going on for another 10 years and see, and, and, and then see how hard it is on you when you're burying your grandchildren or your, you know, that they're dying in their 20s. Or ne nieces. She's 23 years old. I thought she'll make the year. Because her testides are full of polyps. That's all she eats is junk food every day. And she's been doing it for years. And now they got her on chemo and and still eating junk food, and I told her dad, you got to watch this stuff, man. you got to realize she's got to eat real food with real nutrition in it. You know, if you expect her to live, and I don't know if he's doing anything or not, and I wish I could help her more, but I'm limited like everybody else. I'm struggling like everybody else. I'm trying to make, I went back to work last week at least, catching up, trying to hope to catch up, but, you know, it's a struggle. And I know everybody's struggling a bit for money, but so anybody that can help, you know, anybody, we, we need to be charitable. That's another ABC. Always be charitable because people are struggling right now. And the people that need help, if you can help them, help them, you know. And, uh, you know, whatever it takes, you know, to turn something around here, that's, you know, we've got to be, like I say, be committed to doing something. And I don't care how little it is, you know. Make your neighbor listen to you. Make them watch it. Say, come on, you watch this DVD, please, you know. And then, you know, let's, let's argue about this. You know, let's at least get the issues out there and, and, and hopefully we can wake the dead before everybody dies because that, that's what's going to happen. We're going to lose 50% of our children and our grandchildren before they reach a healthy, you know, they don't, they're don't. not going to live to be 80 like my dad. They're going to live to be maybe 50 or 60 if they're lucky. And they're going to be suffering by, you know, going through all this medication and, and by, you know, so they're going to lose, you know, any property they had. That's, the most reason for bankruptcy is because of medical issues. Check into that, you know. So I only have people have medical issues now, and they're all all that money is just going into the, again the Rothschild Zionists to control the whole industry. You know, let's keep pumping everybody with pills and all kinds of crap. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm not saying that you know. I know the medical field is there's a lot of good doctors that mean well, but they don't teach about nutrition. That's a, you know, food matters. Watch that documentary. It shows how you know these doctors are not taught about nutrition. They're taught about how to fix the symptoms, you know. And no, they're good. Cure. Yeah. Only need a treatment. Right, I need a treatment. They don't and so to, to get back to the cure, you gotta to get to the you know, what's causing the problem and then avoid it. You know, and, and eat real food, real nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's and, not a uh, lack of chemotherapy that gave you the cancer. Right, exactly. And that's, that's like, it's, it's not like, a lack of aspirin that gave you that headache. Right. Mm -hmm. And people just keep popping these pills you know, and like I said one of the greatest medicines out there is marijuana. By the way, you know, I'm, I got to go to trial for this, and on the 28th, if anybody can show up and get, help me support, because, you know, I don't know if you know the story, but anyway, just because I had a little bit that I used for medicinal purpose. I've had cancer for 23 years, and it's, it's been in remission for a long, and it's, it's a type of cancer, it's pulse, just like, you know, I had them cut out 23 years ago, and they started coming back, and I realized, they're in my sciences, out of 500 people, Dr. Yost told me uh, he only seen one other person with the worst case. I mean, I lost my sense of smell completely. 
for like six months or a year. And it was bad, you know. I, every time I laid down at night, completely plugged up. And I would get, get up in the morning, and it took till maybe noon before I could start to smell anything. And this went, you know, on until I finally said, man, because you know, I was always like my dad, I ain't going to go to the doctor. And finally went to the doctor. And I said, it cut everything out, and it was all good for maybe five or six years. and started coming back. And that's when I started learning more about homeopathic treatment. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know, if I keep going back and get this stuff cut out, it's going to you know, eventually spread. And that's what happened. Tumors aren't exactly a bad thing. From my stuff I've read, tumors keep the cancer cells contained. It's so when they start slicing into them all the time, pretty soon the cancer cells can spread. You know, so you, what you want to do is, after the, shrink the tumors, you know, by doing, by whatever that was causing the tumors, eliminate that from your diet or from, and that, so in a, in a sense, I still have them, but they, you know, all I know, I can, I can eat junk food for, you know, two or three donuts and a couple cups of coffee, sugar, all of a sudden I'm losing my sense of smell, you know. So I know, you know, after doing that for a day, you know, I won't eat nothing for a couple of days. I'll drink lots of alkaline water and stuff, and it stays right up. So in a sense, this cancer is my friend because it's making me watch my diet. It's making me, I, I know what's bad because it affects me almost instantly. So it's not a bad thing when you use, you know, if you, if you know what's happening. That's what I'm saying. I try, try to get people, that's another ABC I'm trying to get, um, is uh, alternative, better, cures, you know, and that's what we needed to go, get the alternative better cures, you know, and, and get people to understand some of these basic issues, you know, and, and get them on that nutrition track, you know, and anyway, there's there's so much going on in this war, you know, that, that we're in, and, and people better understand the nature of the war, or we're going to lose, you know, these, hey, I hate to see, you know, to point the finger at anybody, and I, I, I like to forgive anybody that's, that unknowingly has caused harm to anybody, and I will, you know, because I, I know most people do things out of just ignorance, you know, so, you know, it's, but, the, but, you know, you can only take ignorance, like, like my father's generation and all those guys that were in the military, they didn't understand. They thought they were fighting for the American way, and that's why we were all conditioned through the TV and through the school system. We were all you know, brainwashed to think that, but there's no excuse for our generation. We have the knowledge out there. We should take the time and push this knowledge on everybody else. So we understand who these Rothschilds, Zionists are, how they manipulated everything, how they still manipulate everything, and how they're going to manipulate everything, you know, until they get their way. The serpent is making a big... You see that symbol with the serpent going around and swallowing its tail. It's, you know, they they said they called those people the serpent people back in the day, and and they probably still are called that by some today. But uh, the, the the thing is, we need to understand what the war and the nature of the war, and we need to get people organized in small groups. You know, all but to make this club concept take off yeah. all around the world. You know, all around the, at least your area. You know. We need people to organize on a regular basis, not just even once a month, maybe more than that. So they get to know their neighbors and they trust their neighbors and work with their neighbors. That's why I tried this tally stick thing to get people to go on, work together, you know, get to know each other. And, and, and when you start working on projects together, you will get to know somebody, you know. And it can help each other in, in, in not just by learning new things, you're, you're bartering and you're getting a means of exchange out there that actually works. And that's one of the things I wanted to say. That's why I wanted my sister to talk. Is, Gardening and growing organic food is probably the most important thing right now that I, you know, I want people to, if they don't have a garden, you know, and come here and then they can work on a garden, make tally sticks, you know, if you guys were here last month, I explained what these tally sticks are, you know, and you can make your stock here and then turn them into tally sticks and work on the garden, or you can make, if you have your own garden, make your own tally sticks, you know, that means you should see her tomatoes she grows, unbelievable, I would accept her tally sticks for for ten dollars worth of tomatoes any day, she has a hundred, you know, hundreds and hundreds of them. But that's what I'm saying. Get people to whatever they specialize in. They can make their own tally sticks, and I'll trade my tally sticks for anybody that I know has. Or they can stand by their currency, so to speak. So what currency really is? Think of the word currency. You know, that is a current. That's your energy. So if somebody's putting energy into anything. That's basically what money, real money is. It's somebody's energy. 
And so we're turning, you know, my I'm turning my energy of building this place and making it a communication hub and whatever it is, you know, all the different things it could be or should be or might be or, you know, that people understand it and they take that energy in my, in, that I turn into a real money, you know, and, and exchange it. And hopefully people will respect them say, yeah, I'll accept these tally sticks. I know that Mike Green stands behind this and, and, and this thing's worth money. I can, I can go right now and turn this in for fish or a couple glasses of wine or piano lesson or whatever, you know, night stay, what all the, you know, I'm going to have all kinds of stuff that my tally sticks are good for. And I'm hoping people, other people, do the same thing with their tally sticks, you know. But we've got to get away from their money system, you know. We're all sucking on the beast, the tits beast. Yeah. Or the beast tits. The beast tits. <laughs> <laughs> tits, I should say. That <laughs> and that's a sad fact, but, you know, that's why they got us, because they got to control the money, and that's what Rothschilds do that right from the get-go. You know, control the money. He cares a lot who makes the laws. Because, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. And that's what Tom's going to speak a little bit about money. And, and, and. Well, you know, the uh, each time when the Zionists, the Zionist Jews or the Talmudic, when, when they go into a country and people finally realize what's going on, why do you think they always get kicked out of countries? Right. Well, you're just being anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> or a self-hater. Or a self-hater. Okay, I gotta go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I have to go get my babies from dance. So... You'll probably only be talking. So I wanted to catch that. Well, I'll be talking for another two hours. No doubt, my mind. That was just the introduction. Yeah, that was the introduction. No doubt. I go, we start talking like that at 4 30 in the morning. But Tell them what happened just down there, just now. Wait, there was a lot. I don't <laughs> Not that. <laughs> hey, this is being recorded. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get a kiss off. I have, I have one of them. I have one of them chase lounges. Yeah. You, like you lay on if you're you're in the psychiatrist's office. All right. <laughs> no wonder I want one. <laughs> and now I'm think I'm thinking about who can I give this to, right? It's in nice shape. Okay. It's her birthday. I'm getting ready to tell her, ask her if she wanted it, and she says, "You know what? I really want." It. And she tells me that. I mean, not, is that uh, crazy no. or what? No. Man. Yeah. And oh, he's man. like, "What? What? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, what? that's exactly what I said. That's the idea. I said, "Don't work for it. I'll pick it up." He's like, "I don't even better yet." The coincidences that I've had happen to me so it. much. He's still in shock. Constantly. That is crazy. I know what I want. Now, if okay. I brought my scriptures, I was going to read the page out of the scriptures, because it, right where I threw in the, the thing the last time, because I do that, I put, sometimes I just open up and throw my bookmark in, so the next time I open up, you know, I'll start reading there, and I opened up to about the wars and rumors of wars, you know, last night, I'm thinking, my good sleep was 2.30 in the morning, and I don't even know where I brought the scripture in, if it's, but anyway, it's based from Mark 13 or something, but it, it talks about the end times, you know, all this talk about wars and rumors of wars and whatnot, you know, and be, you know, how to be aware of what's, what's going on, and, and I don't know if I had it, I'd read it to you, but anyway. You'll find it at 4.30 in the morning and read it to me. <laughs> yeah, read, I think it's Mark 13 or 14. And in the Book of Mormon, it's Doctrine and Covenants. Uh, That's my new bed. And I do, you know, I, I accept the book, you know, Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants is, is the Word of God. A lot of people don't, and a lot of people have trouble with that. And I can understand, you know, because we all fight about religions, you know. And, but there's, and, I, and I'm not saying that the, the leaders of the church, to me, I feel like there's some issues going on there that deserve plain simple truths that they should be talking about, they completely like this, you know, the issues that I'm talking about, they just ignore them, you know, they seem so concerned about people's lives and everything, meanwhile, how can they not know that this stuff's going on with 9-11 and, and fluoride and all these things and not say anything, you know, how can the leaders of the church, of any church, you know, willfully ignorant, yeah, willfully ignorant, that's the good, that's exactly it, now, come on, you want me to follow you, better get your head out of the sand and, and show that you care about innocent children and people, otherwise I'm having trouble with the leadership, you know, and, and, and that's not just the Latter-day Saints, that's a lot, almost every denomination, it seems like 
hey, where's the leaders at? You know, aren't, are they going to stand by and just wait? You know, of course, you're probably making a lot of money at these funerals and stuff, so I can understand that. It's it. And that's a bad joke. But it's, it, it's sad, you know. It, I, don't, I don't know what to say, except that I think I should Good shut up before I get myself killed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's not such a bad thing sometimes, I think, you know, maybe that's, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather be, yeah, I'd rather, you know, not that anybody wants to die, I don't think, but, you know, I don't, it's killing me inside just to watch what's going on. It's like a slow torture, you know, and it's like, geez, I'd rather be martyred, at least trying to fight some evil that I see is going on than do nothing. Yeah. You know, if we're not going to resist evil, evil's going to win. Well, that's just the way it is. Be careful what you say about it. I didn't bring my Marines with me. I know, but I hope they. I hope they're somehow they got a tracking device in your ears. That's why your ears are like that, right? Not nice at all. Yeah, I know. My dad is a trial to declare you incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> He's always been an inspiration. A real man of God. I'm telling you what. I don't know how many times I heard this guy. Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you thought that was your name. This yeah. is your name. <laughs> <laughs> That's the case. I'm gonna have to grow my hair long. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he has. You have been. You've been a good father. Like I said, that, and your generation. Like I said, I respect all the military guys out there. That they, they believed in what they were doing. They fought and died. You know for. What they believe is the American way, they don't understand the issues of what's going on. And that's what our generation needs to understand these deeper issues, to be, you know, more committed to the war that we're in. And understand that if we don't do something, we're going to lose. And we better do something fast. Because they know that their time, Satan's time, you know, in, in the Revelation, how his time is short. You know, what is that Revelation 13 or 14? Who can make war with the beast? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's something to that effect. I just read it in your book here. But, uh, it, it's chapter 14, I believe. Bloodlines. Well, that's who's the beast? The beast is, is very, you know, it's probably the bloodlines and definitely the blood of the beast. I'd say, you know, they're all tied in, you know, all the whole economy of the world is tied in with the beast somehow. You know, like the, I, I feel like all these church denominations are... So, Kind of hanging on the bed of the beast like mm -hmm. like curtains. And I hate to say it, Dad, with being a Catholic, like you know, but I think Roman Catholicism is, is the bed of the beast. You know, they, they basically use that to spread a lot of. Um, oh, that's the truth. A lot mm -hmm. of false spirituality. And I'm saying there's, there's a lot of good Catholics. I know, you know, in, in our family, and you know, and, and I love them, and I love any Christian, anybody that has a, a, a good heart, and you know, and, and means well, you know, and tries to. You know, accept the Lord and do the best they can to, you know, sort of fellow man. You know, to me, that's the real Christians, you know, and, and maybe in, until we find a pure denomination that's, that, that's uh, you know, true to a man, you know, uh, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not, I don't want to be ju too judgmental because, you know, that's what gets people fighting and hating and whatever, but there's a lot there. These, these priests and what, what not out there, and some of these uh, spiritual men better wake up, you know, it's, like he said, they're gonna, it's, it's gonna get uglier and uglier, you know, and, and uh, I don't know what else to say, um, if anybody else wants to step up to the plate and, and bear their soul, you're more than welcome. Um, I got a question, uh, what basically are you looking for, uh, you talked about making commitments, uh, but uh, what are you looking well, for specific, I mean, like, specifically? I mean, like, every, every plan. meeting I try to get people more involved to come here and stay or come here and, you know. Okay. I'm going to start with a collection. And that's an awesome thing. You know what, the new, the new moon, I didn't know this when I started these new moon meetings, but from being around Pastor Dwayne, a lot of people, I know, don't, he's tough. Dwayne is tough. He makes the Latter-day Saints look like nothing. I mean, he, he and, and, and a lot of people don't like it, but he is tough, and that's good in some ways. You know, I don't agree with everything he says, but like a lot of things I learned about the new moon, it was from the early Israelites. You know, that's in the Bible. You know, it's, and then I read it. It's there. You know, they followed the moon. That was a sign that God gave the fall for worship. You know, and I always rationalized, well, maybe we're just supposed to rest one day a week. And, 
or maybe, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, as long as you're taking a, a break from work and or, and it is a lot gathering together in the last days, that's true, but maybe it is because the moon, the cycles of the moon affects people, you know, we're our light, you know, really our bodies are made of light, you know, the light of Christ is what makes us up, and so maybe the, because of that reason is why we're supposed to worship on the cycles of the moon, you know, I don't think it's crazy. We're that, we're that. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I should tell you this, you'll really think I'm crazy. The first vision I ever had, I was only like six or seven years old. And I was staring out at the sun beside the house or in Duffy Road, a neighbor's house. And I went into this vision. And believe it or not, I was Adam. I mean, I was a full grown man in, in this paradise. That's the only way I can describe it, you know. And I had, it was unbelievable. I mean, just all, all these animals and all these sense of smell and everything. And it, it was more than just like a dream. It was so vivid. And I'm walking down this hill and absor 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 absorbing everything and just being, you know, it was just such a wonderful vision or whatever. And then I snapped out of it. And I never really told anybody but my wife about that, you know. I said, you know, and maybe, you know, I'm not saying, am I saying I'm Adam? I don't know, but I felt like maybe part of his DNA that's still in me and it's still in maybe every one of you or whatever. Somehow, you know, maybe that's where some of these dreams and visions come from, you know. So maybe deep down, you know, I am part of that. I'm the same, same with, you know, all of you. And you think about, I was thinking about, you know, maybe I got to kind of got a peephole in, into what he actually experienced in, the, in paradise. Or in the Garden of Eden, not paradise, the Garden of Eden, you know. And so maybe some, somehow he can actually see through all of us being we're his descendants. You know, and maybe we're like the peoples, you know, all the peoples of the world, world, I think of that term, peoples, you know, and he sees, or God sees through all of us, you know, and so that's the first actual, what I would call a real eye-opener you know, vision I had, but I was also one that had the blessing to be in the tunnel, I had a near-death or what I call near-life experience, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what, to explain that to anybody, it's... It's, words do not do it justice. All, and it, but I, people, I've talked to quite a few that have experienced the same thing. And it's just beautiful. I mean, it's like a tunnel in the, in the metaphor because you are flowing with all this glorious lights of all the creation, you know, you know and you're, you're, you're just going to the Father. You know, the, the Father of lights is a, you know, the term you're here. Because, you know, you, you just want to keep going. And so you know, you're in the love of God. And the, it's a love's a real thing. It's just overwhelming. And I said, I didn't want to get back, but I was told, a voice came into my mind, without actual words, and basically told me how to be careful using your language, because it's the most important thing in the world. And that's the next thing I know, I'm back to this reality, and I'm like, what was that all about? You know, and it, it, it was a shock. But I've talked to probably at least, and I've read stuff, because that happened to me, I've read, I don't know how many different experiences, a lot of people experienced that. But very few people have experienced was the other side. I got to experience that as well, and I was in the darkness for a brief period of time. And within a day, I was so delighted after that one thing, I was climbing a tree, I fell 30 feet, and it knocked everything out of me, and I was in the opposite. I was in the darkness, and I only talked to one other guy that experienced the same thing, he's like me. He's the only one other guy explained to, got to experience the light and the dark, and he said the same thing, like, this guy's now a Buddhist, he won't harm anybody. He doesn't even like to touch Federal Reserve notes because he feels like it's blood money and it might affect him, you know. And, he, and, and I mean, I want to, not that extreme yet, but, you know. But I'll tell you what, you go, you get one little taste of that darkness, and I will do anything to try to help anybody from going there. Because all, all, all I can say to explain it is black, dark. You feel the, you feel the lost souls there, and, and it's just horrible. I mean, I was praying, Lord, just please give, you know, and I don't know, my prayers, and all of a sudden, I, I got to breathe, and I snapped back out of it. But like I said, but I got to see both sides, and believe me, that's, you don't want to go to the, the other side. I don't care how wicked somebody is, you know, they, I think anybody can repent, you know, and make, you know, turn their lives around if they are, no matter how wicked they are. And that's hopefully what I can get people to do that, that are, on the, you know, working for the Luciferians or whatever they're, 
Because I think it, by reading, they think they can do bad, good. They do good at too. You know, Luciferians, that's their motto. They, they think they're here to spread evil, and they're doing a wonderful job, you know. But they think they, they also do good, you know, because it makes up. They think they can do a little both, and that's part of their uh, job, I guess. And they, like I said, they're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> how, how wicked and evil and corrupt and how, how bad has it got to get, you know? I, I think, you know, that hopefully, oh, just hopefully we've all, we've reached a point where it's going to go the other way, you know, or, you know, or else. I'm uh, glad, I'm proud of you, Mike. Anyway, I guess I better, uh, I think I said enough. <laughs> if anybody else would like to uh, come up and speak uh, before Tom or after Tom, and, oh, no. uh, um, Tom, and this is a this is the thing about money. Here's, here's just the way, and he's very strict, and he, he he won't come to these new moon meetings because he says, well, it's not spiritual. You're really not worshiping the Father, and you know when you should be worshiping. And I, like, okay, Blaine, we, we, we talk about things that might you know. How much do you want to know about the Father? It's like, you know, it's not just about knowing Scripture. You know, a, a computer or an Android can cite scriptures, you know, and so there's a lot about the Father that's not just reading scriptures, you know, and I said, so we experience all kinds of different things, and money is very important, mm -hmm. because it's, you know, like I said, the usury issue and getting away from the control of money, that causes so much evil, you know, that is one of the main things I think should be talked about in these churches, you know, mm -hmm. nowadays you don't hear anything about usury, and that's what's robbing the people, you know, it's, that's what, you know, I, I was real close to losing this property, and, I, and if I didn't get back to work, I probably will, because the usury will well, get me like it's uh, how many people have lost their own? 15, 16 million now or more? The bankers. The bankers are crazy. Yeah, they're right. Reagan or Rothschild Zionists and their whole agenda is working very well for them. Well, there is a way out. And there is a way out. And this Amen. that brings me with uh, Brother Tom. And so I pass the green man on to you. Cause as much trouble as you can. I don't see Grow. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking, what what is the greening house? You know, what why is everybody here? why is everybody here for an answer? It's got to be because there's not anything else here but answers. Like an education class. Well, I think I might have found an answer. Uh, well, to this problem. It's called Bitcoin. I don't know who's heard of it in here or who hasn't heard of it. I've but heard of it. You've heard of it. You've heard of Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin virtual is a yeah. It's basically a digits. You know, decentralized. Totally decentralized. Inflation proof. Yes, because there it's basically an algorithm that these really really smart guys came up with, and it's actually open source code. Too. If you want to go into the weeds of what it is, it's open source, which is kind of like Linux. Um, so anybody can manipulate the code, but they can't manipulate it in such a way that it'll break it. They can only improve it. It's the way Linux works. Right. It's open source. There's companies like Red Hat and stuff, and they'll actually service Linux and set whole things up very secure because it's open source, because everyone has access to it. And the when it comes to those types of things, the group is always better than any individual because the group knows more. Each individual knows more. Um, Bitcoin takes advantage of that. It takes advantage of being outside of the monetary system because of its very nature. It's designed as a distributed network. And everyone, if you have a Bitcoin, it has all of the Bitcoin information of all other Bitcoins actually contained in that, that glyph. And you have like a private key, and you can you can accept and exchange it and everything. It is kind of like in lieu of a, ta of a tally stick. Right. We were talking about currency. It's actually a currency. Um, and there is this educational program that I just found out about that teaches you all about Bitcoin, and it, it teaches you all about um, freedom and liberty, and it's very, very new. So... When you look at the website, it's, it's, it's actually quite incredible. They have information that will appeal to everybody in this room. There's no doubt about it because everybody 
conspiracies here for a lot of the same reasons. There's a lot of, I call them conspiracy theories, but there's a lot of things going on. And this is basically, you can use Bitcoin to transfer money back and forth amongst yourselves, and it operates completely and entirely outside of the monetary system. It's almost like a, um, a modern day, uh, what do they call it, a hodge or something? There's a, 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 a Middle Eastern term where you can pass money around and people take a cut. In the fact that it is all cash, you can use cash, silver, or gold in order to buy this Bitcoin, and there's like a market for it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, there's this program that you can plug into that revolves around Bitcoin. All the payments are in Bitcoin, and it's actually a network marketed thing. And it's so new, I kind of stumbled onto it on the internet, that the, it's not completely set up yet. And I know that when you say network marketing, you're going, you know, because there's, a, there's been a lot of, you know, there can be problems. This thing is so new, it's almost like you just met the person who started Amway or something. And this is where I'm at with this thing. We're actually putting it together. There's going to be a, a conference call that explains it, okay, and the compensation program and everything. But it's all done. We're, we're, we're doing it all with Bitcoin. Okay, so uh, when you buy it, the, the, the program, and get the right to make Bitcoin with it, okay, the, the cash is moving around, but it's, it's, you're actually going into the realm of, of, of Bitcoin. But there's a lot more to it because there's this, this huge like university that has like three different programs. One's on liberty, one's on economics, and what was the third one, Jim? It's on here. I, I, I can't it's in here. Yeah. Freedom, liberty, and um, economics. Yeah, and economics. And, it, and there are resources there such as, um, there's a whole thing about limited liability corporations and setting up limited liability corporations in lieu of or in conjunction with uh, pure trust, which is what's, and they actually have the forms on here. That's part of what you're buying when you get this, okay? It's like a library of all of this information that you can, it's called uh, My Free Income, it's MyFreeIncome.com. And we're going to be having a conference call sometime within the next seven days. So what I am going to need to do is be able to get in touch with everybody either through email or something that, that would be interested in finding out about, you know, more about this. Mm -hmm. And then we have it, I'll let everybody know that there's going to be this conference call. You to put emails on the back of that. The emails on the back of this. I didn't describe it very well because there's a whole bunch of moving parts yeah. in this thing. Well, with Bitcoin or... With actually the information, the oh, Bitcoin okay. is kind of the currency. It's, right. it's the vehicle that is making this happen. But it's a digital currency. Right. But what's at the site could change everybody in here's life. I mean, if you want to protect your assets, you want to get them out of the reach of the, the man, okay? and you want to find a, a, a way to protect yourself from possible lawsuits and stuff like that, it just depends on how much, how much wealth you have. But, I mean, you can say, do you want to drop out? Do you want to become invisible? Do you want privacy back? I mean, there's just so many right. different directions you can go. All of that information you is want here. To completely deduct your living expenses every year. That, there's, yes, there's the actually thing. a ministry in here. I became an ordained minister two days ago by signing some this thing and giving it my email and name. And now, mm -hmm. because I am an ordained minister, and the, what, what is the church again? The Church of... Uh, Freedom. <laughs> anyway, I got to read about church it. The name on yes, it's, it is the Church of Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. I actually need. To, I got to read. I got to learn oh, about Lord. it. Okay. But, this your first sermon? <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Pass it later on. Yeah. Anyway, I saw. Nice to be with old man. Oh my God. I kind of see things, I'm kind of like a ready, fire, aim type of person. Okay. I saw this, and I have been doing a lot of my own research about the economies and stuff, and I've been a trader and blah, 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 but through my research, I found, I mentioned before, the Stansberry, uh, Porter Stansberry, and the Ogara Financial, which is Bill Bonner, and uh, the Palm Beach Letter, 
and a lot of them were talking about you know gold and silver, but they're talking about investment and everything, and they have especially Agora Financial has this thing called the laissez Fair Book Club, and I read a lot. Oh yeah. Okay. And I had that had laid the groundwork for my epiphany with Bitcoin and this, and I, I swear I did a I, I did a search on Google, and. It came up like third or fourth down, and because of what I had learned and read from these extremely yeah. expensive newsletters and a bunch of my own reading, mm -hmm. everything that this guy was saying made sense, and everything that everybody else was saying seemed like BS, because it was either go to uh, LegalZoom or whatever, and they were setting up, you know, you can set up LLCs, and there's like, they are all statutory, but the, New Mexico is the only state in, in the United States where they have the advantage of you set up an LLC without a name and without you know, an address and, and they help you get that all set up and that's kind of like the foundation of where I came at this from but it's beneath all of these other things so if you want to like disappear and you want to get off the grid so to speak get off, you know, off the, uh, the, the matrix if you will because everybody is uh, basically and this is kind of sort of what you were talking about when you're in the monetary system the banking system People that are in control, nefarious or not, see every one of us individuals basically as a milk cow or a battery, like in The Matrix. Everybody's seen the movie The Matrix, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. You know, they, he gets in the car and she says, ah, shut up, copper top. Well, it's because the people are batteries, okay? And they're just milking you for this. Well, there's a way to take this and instead of putting it in like gold or silver, which is not a bad idea, okay, or a house you know, real estate or something, you can put it into Bitcoin, and yes, it can be stolen from you if you have it, like, on, if, this, if somebody hacks your password or something. And it gets back into the technical right. stuff. It's all encrypted, and that, if you're stupid, just like if you go into a coffee shop and you have all your passwords saved on your computer, and you're going all over the Internet, and somebody else has one of those things that will grab the information, well, you can't do that with your wallet, which is this digital <laughs> thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why it's really nice to actually have the paper wallet for th stuff like that, where you can collect Bitcoin. Like, um, like if we had gone to uh, the uh, coffee shop or something, mm -hmm. and you bought me you know, lunch, and I wanted to pay you back in Bitcoin, you basically take your smartphone, you scan it, or you can put it in your email or whatever. You know, there's it's it's digital, and instantaneously, you know, after I've sent the, the message to your email, that's it. You got the money is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because it's actually really real money. It's, you have to kind of wrap your head around it. You have, it's, it's almost the type of thing where you have to have an epiphany and you, you realize, you're like, oh my God, you know, because there's an incredible resistance. Everyone's been conditioned. You think of money as money and I, you just can't wrap your head around it. But basically what would happen if everyone in this room were to do this, forget about the MLA, just do the Bitcoin. We could each be a, a bank for each other. Yeah. We were talking to the guy, Jim signed up. Okay, and we were talking to the guy, and I was like, well, how am I going to get the Bitcoin? He doesn't have his wallet yet, and, yeah. and how are we going to send the money with a check to you? And yeah. You have to change your way of right. thinking okay, about money, because what he, basically what happened was Jim gave me the money. Okay, Now, this guy, I had already done some Bitcoin transactions with, and he knows that I can get the money to him. So he gave me the cash. I'm going to go deposit it in the bank right now, because it's the only way I can do it and use one of these services, and it's, it's just all explained in here. Um, and then I'm going to get buy Bitcoin, and I'm going to give it to this guy, and he's going to get the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's kind of, it's, it's, that's part of the epiphany that you have to, you have to kind of wrap your head around how this is going to happen. Okay, but this, and I'm jumping all over the place, because there isn't even, this is the thing, there's not even a presentation yet. Presentation, the first presentation is going to be the conference call that we are on. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, and it's going to be recorded and go onto the web, onto the websites. And I mean, it took us, what, 15 minutes for you to have your own URL? Yeah. Right. There's a lot of good presentations on Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, my well, no, this really, isn't really. Yes. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yes. I'm this is actually. To understand Bitcoin. Ties it all together. Yeah. And we're using those. Yeah. They are. I mean, I've seen it. It's just like a, it's like a blog right now. And it's got I try to tell people right off the bat there's, it's inflation proof. There's only so many Bitcoin. That's where we. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's where you have to There will better. only ever be so if There's only million. so many of one thing. Right. And, and it. You have a value. Right. You know what I mean? There will right. only ever be 21 million, million. Right. Bitcoin. 
And they're at 11 million right now. Yeah. And these machines are actually mining turning machines. into mining I have, machines. I have a friend that has a Does he? Yeah, that's what I was. A couple of days. Sorry. Yeah, but a couple day. of days. Every day. Yeah. It's changed at almost $50 and when a he, coin when right now. I bought it two he, weeks ago. And this is hy hyperbole, okay? This, markets can be this way. I'm not going to say if you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin today, you're going to be a millionaire tomorrow. Right. No. This does not happen very often in the market. And when you want to talk about stocks and Forex and, and the bond market, I know these things. And yeah. I've seen a lot of charts in my day. I was a chartist for a while. I do more fundamental investing yeah. now because <coughs> charts are all emotion. Mm -hmm. This thing's gone parabolic. <coughs> I spent $137 and got five Bitcoin two weeks ago. And now it's worth $400. Okay, This isn't going to happen all the time. From what they said on the last conference call, which wasn't even, it was a test, okay, for, to get to market this thing, all right, using Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. They said that they had people that stayed on the call for two hours, and there was, I was there. We stayed on the call for two hours, there was 25 of us left. Think of that on a conference call, it doesn't happen. The general, the most average person's attention span is five minutes, most people. If they stay for 20, you're a hero, you're a god. Yeah. And people, there was still 25 of us left, okay? And there's like me and three or four other people that are on the first level. It's, 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 it's incredible. And this is that kind of an opportunity for everyone in here, which gets into how, yes. I was going to say that, you know, like, as an international, is there a way of current, of, of using your energy on a, on a level that's untouchable, basically, or, you know, by the, searchable by, by the banking system? Right. And by the authority, it's right. well, I, I, like, I do like that, but not the biggest threat to the power that should be. But there's nothing they can do to stop it. A lot of people will say, "Well, what if somebody shuts down Bitcoin?" Well, you can't. It would be like shutting down ice films or, or air. <laughs> well, <laughs> the internet. The only way to stop it because it's a distributed network. That was what I was talking about before. I, I digress all the way back to when I was talking about the blocks, of, and you can do it with your phone and stuff. Actually, each Bitcoin has information in it so that it cannot be counterfeited. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the only way that anybody could get it from you is to actually steal your password, and there's like a double level of encryption and everything. So it, it's incredibly secure, and it can't be shut down because it's like it is a peer-to-peer -peer network. Each Bitcoin is actually its own sort of peer-to-peer, -peer, and they all know where the other, who the other ones are, and it traces all back. It's beyond my level of comprehension, but it, it, that's what it's about. Um, it's like a high-level uh, advanced telly stick. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I heard about this, the first Shit. person I thought of was Mike. And if everybody wanted to contribute, what we need to do is put you in it. And anyone who wants to contribute to the greening house can make Mike be solvent and keep this idea going. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about all of the things that go along with working within this monetary system. And you don't have to trust, even though I'm not saying anybody right. here isn't trustworthy. Right. It takes this and puts it in your pocket without using that. Did you ever, I want to, my goal is next December 21st, that's 100 years of Federal Reserve System will be in effect. And 25. I'm hoping to be able to get out of their system by then. And you could do that with this, dude. Goes. I know you and can. I, and that's, and if, I, if I have help, and I, you know, then I will try to help anybody else on the road to do the same thing. It's really, but I, but know, that's exactly, and that's what Barack drew me to this. Dude, I've done network marketing before. And it's always this hierarchy, and everybody says, pyramid scheme. And yeah, it is kind of, you know, you, yeah. you get two or three, and they get two or three, and they get two or three. And it's, you know, top down, and you don't even know who they are. This doesn't work that way. And this was the thing that got me and Jim, because we couldn't figure out how the heck do you get paid? It just doesn't make any sense. And what, all you have to do is help one person find their one person as the commitment that they've made to you that will do this. And it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. So you don't have a hierarchy, you actually have a string. Because you always get the person that the person brings to replace themselves. And that's where the income comes from. And that's where you would be. You know, like we, we put you under Jim. He's fulfilled his obligation to me. And then the, the next person's commission uh, for Jim comes from you. 
So if you had two people in this room that wanted to do this, one would go under Jim and one would go under the other one. Correct. <laughs> and the other one would still have to find someone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But Jim's done. Everyone he finds, he gets the commission for. Okay. Because and, and basically every person is helping one person completely change their life, mm -hmm. literally. And I mean literally all the way down to legally, monetarily, because it's all here. Spiritual. And I know it's a really rough presentation, but I'm yeah. telling you, I've seen it. I saw the list of the things. It, it would take me like two or three good, weeks to read all of this. We need to tweak out a good presentation. I'll put it on the and we can market it like that. Exactly. It's not, you don't need a computer to do all this, do you? Do you? Yes. Yeah, you, yeah. you have to have a Well, or a no, phone. not really. Not really. If you want to really go hardcore uh, Bitcoin, you can do it with a paper wallet and be accepting money all over the place and spending money because it is literally a string of numbers that accepts and a different string of numbers that receives, or that uh, spends, that gives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it can, be, it can be done with a smartphone. It can be done with, you know, an email address and a smartphone. You don't necessarily have to have the internet. Okay? Yeah, because someone around you will. That's what's the power of this. You have to think a different way. You know, if anybody's got a smartphone and you even have your paper wallet with you, and it's got Bitcoin in it, eight, nine years, and it's reaching a critical mass. It went I parabolic. It, yeah, I watched it. It went, it went up to like $30 for a while and it came way back down. It came down. That's normal in any yeah. market. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is because it is a currency, when you think of a currency, you have to think of it in relation to another currency or gold or silver or Bitcoin or a tally stick or an amount of work, mm -hmm. okay, because that's what a currency is. A currency is a medium of transferring Energy, money, whatever. Money is what we call it, okay? And, like, let's say you have the dollar here and you have the <coughs> yen, the Japanese yen here, okay? Anytime a currency is traded, it's traded in a thing. It's traded in a pair because you're short one and long the other. Like, if you're selling yen, you're actually buying dollars. So if you're holding your money in dollars, what you've effectively done is you have hedged what you hold in your hand against the yen, the euro, the Swiss franc, the guilder, the loonie, whatever it is, whoever else's currency it is, when you hold dollars, you're actually betting against those other currencies because you can lose. And this is what's going on, in, I'm jumping all over the place, but this is what's going on in the banking system, is there's a race to the bottom now. The only reason why the dollar is still the world reserve currency is because we're the least objectionable program in the field of really <laughs> shitty programs. <Yeah. laughs> okay. I got a question about the Bitcoin. There, it's a race to the bottom. The the guy that, that does I get to, the guy that that, uh, that this guy's name's Abe. They just voted him into office in Japan. He said he's going to inflate the money supply until their products become cheap enough on the world market to compete with everybody else's. Okay. And this is what's going on. And, and you know Bernanke has printed. He's tripled the money supply or doubled the money supply within the last year. That's going to come home to roost. All of these dollars will be worthless against the other ones. There's another reason why the dollar is so strong. There was an agreement between uh, Richard Nixon and whoever it was that was the, with the Grand Poobah over in Saudi Arabia. And they formed what's called the petrodollar. Saudi Arabia will not sell oil to anyone unless they, they give them dollars, American dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why we still buy oil from them and don't develop our own oil. Mm -hmm. That's how we imported the inflation worldwide, too. It is the, the largest the transfer of wealth that's ever it's happened in the history of the world. That's why they went after Saddam. And start this to use thing, yeah. even if you don't do the freedom thing, but you'll want the information in order to become truly a sovereign person, a free person, and find that answer that everybody's looking for. Everybody here has come here looking for some kind of answer. Nobody, I can venture to say that I can guess that there isn't anybody in here who isn't looking for something. Something isn't right. You want, and you want to be able to do something about it. You are good at pointing out what's going on. This is something that each one of us can do about it. Mm -hmm. To free ourselves from being a copper top or a milk cow. 
it's right here, man. I, I've never seen anything like it. Okay, what's on you? My money, <laughs> my, money, my income. My free income. My free income. My free income. Oh, my free income. Yes. So basically, what I need to do is get anybody who would be interested in knowing about this. Give me your name and uh, email address, or phone number, or both. And when that call happens, he will explain it a lot better than I have. Is it going to be like within the next week or two? Or seven days. Seven seven days. days. Tonight. Yeah. Not tonight. No. <laughs> but it will be within the next few days, probably, but he said within the next seven. Oh. And then that is actually going to, yes. I'm sorry. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> is that one of the reasons why they want to put an internet kill switch? Because of this Bitcoin. Hmm. It just came to mind. Uh, they can't kill the internet. Actually, that's the long, that's the short answer to what I was thinking about saying. They can't kill the internet because they're dependent on it. It's gone too far. The banking system and everything is dependent on the internet now. Ah, okay. And because the internet is a distributed network, it's very robust. They could knock out the entire United States, but there's a lot of information on other servers that are all over everywhere else where they can put it back together again. It just gets, all the flow gets routed a different way. Okay. You wouldn't lose your currency in this get maybe way late. No, as long as you know what your keys are, it's, you, it's yours. It's, it's, you, it's always yours. It doesn't go away. What's up? Doug? Yeah, uh, the other question uh, we have uh, on smartphones. Everything's run by Google. Uh, Not really, but... I mean, they, yeah, Android, Android. Android systems are all Google. Right. So that, uh, the computer system, I'm just wondering about it's, uh, uh, no matter how much double and triple encryption it might occur, we're still looking at uh, uh, Google network accessibility. Uh, I don't know how to answer that, but I know that they can't. There's nothing that they can do. They can't do anything to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's there and it won't go away. But I don't know how to explain it. But I I, I know where you're coming from, and I, you know this guy that I was actually going to have on a conference call, but we couldn't get our plugs in order. This, you, nobody, you wouldn't be able to hear it. Okay. Um, he has the answer to any technical question that you would have about how secure Bitcoin is. And there's a lot of resources that are on this website. There's probably 15 or 20 links there that explain how this works and how it's really one of the, the only way that you can lose bitcoins if somebody steals it from you or hacks and knows your password. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. That's the best I can do there. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Can I turn Cali, Cali sticks into bitcoin somehow? <laughs> that's the only currency I have right now. <laughs> no. Is that a possibility that down the road? So well, you could. That would be a route to have somebody to be somebody money with bitcoins. Yes. Yes. Some that would be a mid, uh, mid, or somebody to be a person that would accept them. Right. Yeah. What product or service does the Who you? free income offer, other than access to the web page and some forms to download about you know New Mexican LLCs and the three areas: economy, liberty. Right. That universe, the Liberty University. Is there any other product or service they offer? There's a lot There's there. There's hundreds on there. Each There's day. a lot there. And that unless was you what get your own URL, you're not going to have access to those. Right. So you I can't have access to them. Tom does. Right. There's a lot of stuff. You, did you go you're to going Market Income? You're going to get the info. And it's my free direct market income. And uh, uh, what's, what's the other one? It takes you to another site and it's talking about the new new uh, New Mexico LLCs. There's a members area that has all of the information there about um, a lot of different things, actually. That's where I was saying there's a lot of moving parts to it. There's, uh, the, 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 uh, the, there's a whole area on trusts, and he's got a bunch of forms and stuff where you can set up your own trust like we did with, with Hagen. Um, there's a lot of stuff about Bitcoin. I'm trying to think from memory what else is there. There's a lot of stuff about privacy. There's a lot of stuff about uh, security with your how to be surfing the web and not being hacked. 
and encrypted uh, emails and if you really want to go far you can like disappear on the web and, you know there's a lot of that kind of stuff in there too yeah. but the bulk of it actually is um, Privacy, that university security, yeah where you can actually get these um, these courses and be a certified teacher of these courses now for me I basically gave myself a tax cut of tens of thousands of dollars because I one of the things on here is actually a ministry that I said I was an ordained minister mm -hmm. and basically I have a living expense so all of my utilities and everything if I were you know if I got to pay my taxes on my income and stuff like that when I'm cause I mean you can't just you got to there's going to be a transition into Bitcoin I mean there's still money in the world and money is what's right. making this happen um, so you deduct your mortgage I deduct my mortgage I deduct your, my electricity yes yeah, because that is, as a, an ordained minister, that is a um, uh, expense. Yeah, to sign a 501c3 contract? No, don't have to do it. No. Yeah, don't ask. Mm. This is, I asked him. We asked him. Is this the LLC for New Mexico you're talking about? No, actually, that's something different. You oh, asked okay. me what else is there. Oh, okay. okay. Say you're making $100,000 oh, okay. a year at your regular right. job, right. and you want to do that, then there's a deduction because you're a member of the Free Man's Church, I think is what it's called, yeah. as an ordained minister. And that's all right. above board. There's nothing uh, illegal about that. Well, you know, you there's go no to reason to poke, I gotta go to poke the dragon yeah. in the eye. i got to go to the nice meeting you guys. Yeah, man. Be good. Okay, Mr. Green. God bless you. Angel. Would you like them? Not too much. So, nice meeting you. Me too. Take care, boy. Be careful. God bless. Take care. Yeah, we can. Crazy boss. It's scattered. How old is that website? Number five. Probably. Dad is. Well, this I guess this concept is within the last month. You're kidding. Yeah, but the guy, you know, he's he used to do real estate, and he did a lot of uh, 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 what do you call it? Wealth, I think wealth management. Isn't that what he said? Mm -hmm. He said it to you. Yeah, well, just they're sitting. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you want to be on a conference call? I hear about this. I, actually, I have this. I have those videos. I watched a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, that new one on the Nazi banks. Yeah, I bet it's right up my. <laughs> so yeah, that's a you know that's that's it's a bad presentation of it, but it's 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 in its formative stages. Okay. Um, what are some of the things? Are you on the website right now? I just lost connectivity. Ah. You want to put a video on these? I will definitely talk to him about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll ask, you know, I'll ask him. I've got to be getting a lot better if somebody else is going to do it right yeah. now because I... Well, Tom, we'll you know what, you have to, on. you almost have to, it is, I mean, we'll I run it as a show on cat. We could do that. We've been down so long to do a couple of shows. Yeah, to that's, educate that's true. people on anything, you almost have to give them a DVD to watch. Well, right. They're trying to get you to read. They're right. going right. to right. get us to read. No, he was actually I saying that there is going to be... Not only when yeah, I get the books back, they wouldn't read them. They don't you know what I, mean? <laughs> I know. That was an expensive proposition. I know. He's actually going to do that. Like I said, this, this first Kurt conference call is going to be the, the presentation. That'll be question and answer. Because it is. It's, 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 it's like the head around this. There's a, there's a uh, Skype uh, program now that a lot of people can do at one time. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah it's called... Um, uh, John Steiner. John Steiner. Where did Mike go? Mike Green. Uh, Green is that. Lost your investors. Yeah, I can't believe what I, I can't believe I can't remember the name. It's John. Uh, oh, sir. Oh, it begins with a J. I'll find. Give me one minute. Paragraph. Technology. Yeah, yeah. Watch one. Yeah. I got to get a smartphone now. Yeah. We finally have. Yeah. Might as well get a smartphone. I've got to do it. I think it's the user, but that's what you smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just had to bring it out. Yeah, I always had. Everybody's always grabbing your phone. You see your phone? You know, they're rifling through all your personal information. So I have this free, nasty, cheap. But now that I'm going to be doing Bitcoin, I really I need to I need to step up. And so like, give me the, the flexibility. Marine, Marine hat, my dad. Marine hat. 
you know who uses this technology is uh, Lincoln. Lincoln uses this. Oh, what's Lincoln? Lincoln. 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 You can actually take a send out card t shirt and put your Bitcoin address on it and have a person pay you for a service. You go out and you do their lawn or you go to a coffee shop and they want to buy you coffee. They can take their smartphone and scan your barcode on your t shirt. I know a guy that wanted to start It's unbelievable. Yeah, he wanted to start up a Bitcoin exchange. There are exchange places, and there's actually another thing that they give you that tells you is how to find local people who have it, because there is cash, you know, behind all of this. So you find somebody who has it, and they'll sell it to you at the market price. Everybody who knows about Bitcoin and has it actually knows what it is, because you know, you're a retard not to know it. It's right there. It's, here it is. It's, you know, you can find it anywhere. I don't think you're going to see it plunge like. Well, they, they, I'm yeah, thinking that just on a technical that, standpoint, it shot up from 32 to 48, 49 actually, yeah, topped out at 49, and now it has retraced to about 45, and I'd have to look at it if you did a Fibonacci on it, I'll bet you that's the first step of a Fibonacci ratio. It'll probably stay there, if it doesn't, it'll drop down another, like, there's a lot a third. Of, right. There's a lot of good things about it. But the biggest things are it's inflation and number one, and it cannot be manipulated. It cannot be manipulated. Like, they can manipulate the price yeah, of can. silver. They've manipulated the price of silver, even though it's right. inflation proof. Right. Oh. Yes, and that gets into oh. a whole complex. Right, because JP yes, Morgan sold millions. Yeah, there's a bunch of paper out there. Yeah, yeah there's a bunch of right. Exactly. They've, they've monetized the course. They've, they've so sold millions of ounces. I got the Rothschild, the Red Oaks, right. the Red Shields. Here. That's it for that's, that's, you can't do that with this. Right. It's even once, better. Once the other thing that's better I about this it is, before let's say going to the SHTF hits the fan, really. She has one. Okay. Oh. If you got $100,000 worth of this, you got to get out of here. Me, right. You're driving around here. Oh, yeah. You're driving around here. Everybody that's starving wants it from you and the authorities that are taking it from you when you get to the bottom. Yes. And you can do it with the bottom. There's a lot of advantages on this. Yeah. Once you, on on once you get people to realize that this, I, I it's an inflation proof currency, but you knew the way right. up cannot be manipulated only by the market. Decentralized, right? If somebody right. comes in and someone else right. comes in and buys a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin, that's the actually what happened. Map, they the said map came. this guy on the other, uh, on the conference yeah. call, the first conference call, you have all the memories, memories. Said that somebody had bought, I think it was a hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin, and that's why it went from thirty. That was the second two we wrote. Right. Right. And you know, if we it's so young here, that it, it, it can bounce around. Going like off to that, that secondary yeah. road, you know? it will knock off But traffic. I mean, mm. it's supply and yeah, demand. Yeah, it's a free market. Yeah. It can't, and that's the thing, man. It can't be manipulated. I never really researched how mining costs are. It's not that far from super. It's getting more and more difficult. The way they design it is that they become scarcer and scarcer as they get closer and closer to 21 million. Right. Okay, and they're about halfway through it, and now we almost have to have a supercomputer. To be oh, crunching yeah. out new bits. The guy who had one, he, he burned out his computer. Right. Yeah. He you can't do it with a regular old PC anymore. He burned out. Yeah. He's I actually out. saw a like uh, Bitcoin uh, miner that like cost thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. There's like yeah. Yeah. little boxes you can put around. Yeah, about six grand died up in his computer, but it wasn't didn't have the. It just couldn't do it. Fans weren't. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's someone's head in there. So now you get these boxes and you connect them to a computer, and they'll churn out. X I want some Bitcoin per <laughs> day or uh, yeah, right. but it's getting less and less. It's getting harder and harder and harder and harder. And so you say, well, what if they hacked it? Well, in order to hack it, you'd need something like a thousand times or a hundred thousand times.